Curry, and we're here to talk about uh, Unity Cloud Build and what was Sugi. Uh, and joining me is Nathan Hanners, our product manager, and we're going to tag team this thing. <clears throat> First off, thank you very much for coming. Um, we're very excited to announce a whole lot of stuff today, namely the existence of our new product and that it's an open beta and that you can try it right now. Um, and a little bit of backstory. Um, Todd talked about this in the keynote this morning, um, but our team is made up predominantly of game developers. We made games, we made console games, uh, we made mobile games, we worked at uh, some uh, famous and infamous game companies, um, made a lot of games uh, that we're proud of back in the console era. Um, and then, like many of our colleagues, uh, a few years ago, we got into mobile games, right? iOS was happening and I was spending more time playing games on my phone than I was on my console. I was like, hey, I should make these and you know <clears throat> show those mobile guys how it's done. Uh, it turns out uh, making mobile games is really fucking hard, and there's just a lot of hassles and a lot of new challenges um, that, as console developers, you know, we we weren't ready for. There were a couple that we knew a little bit about, like we had we had build build machines before. We were kind of CI geeks and and really into that automation stuff. And and even using Unity, making mobile games is, is still hard. Uh, so we made tools for ourselves. We were making games for people like Marvel and uh, Warner Brothers, and so we made tools just so that our little company could stay afloat and we could get things done faster. We made automation tools, CI tools, um, and eventually our, our friends who were working with us, uh, either as consultants or, or employees, were like, hey, th this, is, this is special. This, this should be its own thing. And uh, after a lot of arm twisting, we said, you know what? Okay, we're going to stop making games full time. We're going to just focus on these tools. We're going to make automation tools for mobile app and game developers, and, and that was Sugi, that, that's our company. Which Unity has acquired, and our product that was in uh, secret beta is now in open beta as Unity Cloud Build. And being game developers who know how hard it is to make mobile games and, and make games in Unity, period, our mission is very simple. Our mission is to make your lives easier, right? Take the bullshit out of the process, do that for you automatically in the cloud. Let you and your team focus on making the games. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Nathan, who's going to talk a little bit about the product and what it does. And we'll go from there. Hey, everybody. So yeah, like Patrick said, uh, if you're making mobile games, you know, you're dealing with all the same chores that we dealt with when we had a game studio. We were you're making builds, then you're testing the builds, and then someone comes by. If you're a build engineer, if you're just the guy who somehow got shooed into make, being the person who has to make the builds. Like, hey, I changed some stuff. Can you rebuild it? And here's my iOS devices. Put it on all these things. So uh, we got tired of that. We were like, this is, this is too painful. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff. And that's, this is without even getting into things like managing different SDKs and do you want to try the new version of Unity and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, sharing builds with QA testers and stuff. Uploading to a server and then making a spreadsheet of everyone and what link you give them so that you can replace it with a new version and you know even with test flight, huge problem. So we want to free you from all those things so that you can focus on making a cool game. We want to help you finish your game. We view ourselves like Patrick said. We want to make your life easier. We want to help you launch, not just you know finish and launch a game and and get to where you can do all the cool stuff you saw this morning in the keynote like get monetizing it and getting social stuff happening with every play and all that. So, but to do all that stuff and to engage with your users, you gotta finish the game. Um, and you gotta make the game as good as you can. So here's how the system works. Uh, right now we require you to be using source control. Um, we support Git and SVN and Perforce, but uh, once we're connected to your repo, we just watch it. Our system watches it for changes. And so you, someone on their team, the artist, developer, changes some stuff and commits it to the server, we see the change, and as soon as we can, we kick off a build, and it starts building in the cloud. And this will build uh, for all the platforms you've ticked. Right now, we support iOS and Android and web player, but we're gonna be trying to add uh, support for more platforms in the near future. So we're gonna just start building for you. And then you get an email, and the email has uh, links to install on different devices. Um, and so when you put all that together, the question is how does it blend with your existing workflow, right? That's what we cared about. You know, if we make a whole bunch of tools that require you to put on a whole bunch of steps, you know, we've taken away some pain and introduced more, and that's not what we're, that's not what we're about. So the answer is it blends really well because from your perspective, you commit what you were doing anyway, uh, magically, and you know, not magic, but 
almost like magic, uh, stuff starts building, and you get in, your emails open, right? You see, the, oh, here's the new build, it's ready, you try it out, right? Maybe you, maybe you didn't even should be the one who checked it in, you're working on something else, and whoop, new build comes in the email, and you're like, hey, someone, there's a new build now, and you can go and try it out. So that's the core of the service, that, that really simple, elegant, almost invisible workflow is sort of the, the, the nuts and bolts of what we do. But we wanted to make an interface that tried to support you even more than that, right? So we keep trying to raise the bar for ourselves. So the interface, <clears throat> Uh, we're trying to add value in a few different places, right? So we've got this sort of project management, which is like the, the place where you land. So here's your different Unity projects. Uh, you can see it's got the last success, latest successful builds for each of the platforms you've configured, right? So this Angry Bots, they're only building for web and iOS. This other game, they're building for iOS, Android, and web. So uh, you can go here, install those. Uh, you know, if you come to that same screen on a mobile device, we have an adaptive and responsive design, so you just get the builds for the projects that have builds for that device shoot to the top. You can untick that little box and it'll show you everything. You get a very similar view to the regular screen. But um, that's it. That's what a, you know, someone using our system sees when they're, when they're going to install stuff and look at things. If you drill down into a project, uh, we give you a list of all the build history. So these are all the builds you've made. Um, you, know, you can see if it's successful. In this case, there's a pending one and a couple, wait, uh, a couple building and one pending. Um, uh, we record like the file size, the timestamp, all that stuff. So this is where all your builds are living. Also from this page, you can generate a share link, which actually you can do from the other page as well. When you do that, you get a, we, we dynamically generate a link for you to use to send to people to install the game. Um, in this case, you can see it's warning you like, you know, this will work for anyone as long as you provision, it's an iOS build that you're, you've made a link for, so they've gotta be provisioned, right? You've gotta have their UDIDs. It's a little reminder, but um, you can also revoke that link later. You can decide, uh, this build was busted and I'm done. So you can click that red button and it goes away. No one else can install it. Um, we also capture the full build log as well as a summary build log. You actually, you get the summary in your email. So we call out all the errors and warnings that we see and you can just read that right in the email. Uh, and if you wanna drill deeper, you can log into the website, come here and look at the full log. Uh, we track file changes. We have a summary of like how long it took to build. And that was for, that's like build data, but as in terms of like project intelligence, this is an area that we're really excited about. Um, right now we're just showing you a build health estimate based on how many of your builds fail versus succeed. Um, we're also tracking like average build time and the project size. We've got a lot of really cool plans for this in the future. We wanna provide you with as much project, intel project intelligence as we can. So this will be, I think this is gonna be really interesting. Um, to, sh to get other people on your team into this interface, you just add them as a collaborator, right? So these are people who now can log in and see your project and all this same data. I think the only thing they can't do is delete your project, but they can, they can add more collaborators. It's like a very flat user model. It's really easy to use. Um, and this isn't, again, the share link is for people who, you know, it's just a tester or your mom or whoever. You send them a link and they can install it if you've done everything else right. Um, this is for, you know, people who you want in, in the system to see the same stuff. Um, so again, the core of the service is just the builds. And once you set that up, you're done. You, if you don't want to, you don't ever have to come back here. You could just let the emails tell you what's going on. Um, but the key piece there is onboarding. We want to make it really easy to get, get your project hooked into our system so that we can make your builds for you. So with that in mind, we made a really elegant step-by-step -step wizard that does a lot of error handling and catching. So you give it your URL, tries to figure out if we know what that host is. Oh, it's GitHub. Well, it's Git. So we know a bunch about it. You can just skip ahead. Uh, in fact, if we see it's a public repo, you get to skip a bunch more steps. So we're really trying to make it as fluid as we can to get you connected to the system because once you do that, you, you're good. Unless something goes wrong with your you know, source control server or something, you're, you're fine. Um, you can see also in the wizard, we've got some little helpful uh, links to our support documents. Because we feel, again, we're in the business of pain relief, right? We want to make your, your life easier. And a lot of that is about guiding you through the, all these changing technologies. So in our support section, We've got uh, guides for building with for iOS using Unity Cloud Build. It's sort of all the steps you need, especially if it's someone who's just now getting into iOS, right? It guides you through making the certs and uh, doing the mobile provision file and you know, uh, making a P12 from that. And uh, we also have a guide for using source control with our system. We all, and we highlight the steps like, you know, uh, for example, in the iOS system, you know, if you try to mismatch a development certificate with a production mobile provision file, it's not going to work. And actually, the wizard will catch that and tell you. So um, it's super useful, uh, and we've really tried to make it as smooth as we can. So we, uh, like Patrick said, we really we want to make your lives easier because we went through that, we ran the gauntlet on all these same issues, and we felt like this is what the cloud was good at, is taking this kind of pain away. So 
We're excited for you to sign up for the beta. I'm going to turn it back over to Patrick. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Nate. Uh, so why should you use Unity Cloud Build? Why should you care? Um, first up is you're probably wasting time making builds. How many people in this room are responsible for making builds of their apps? Okay, most of y'all. Thank you for coming again. Um, well, ideally we just take, take that workflow, uh, the tedious steps of that workflow off your shoulders, right? When the boss runs in, crazy, 3 p.m. on a Friday, it was like, hey, I don't like red anymore. Make that icon purple. And the icon, the artist has to change the icon from red to purple. Um, the build engineer shouldn't have to even be in the office. You should be having a beer. Um, the artist should make that commit to the source control. The boss should get an email with that build and the icon's red now and the boss is happy and you're happy because you're having a beer. Um, so, so not only do we automate the build creation process, but we enable everyone on their team uh, to be their own testers, their own, uh, you know, QA their own work, right? The artist is all about iteration. It's all about polish, right? You really want to fine tune how it looks. And look, how it looks in the editor, yeah, it's going to play very simil similarly, but you want to see it on the retina screen, on your device, in your hand, and you want to give your artist the ability to really polish their artwork. And now they can. They make the commit, they get the email, they install on their device. There's no engineers involved, um, you know, for changes, right? Engineers, of course, have plenty of good work to do. Um, the other really nice side benefit is that you start catching these problems sooner, right? This continuous integration is constantly running. We're constantly compiling your project every time we detect a new commit. Um, and so you and the team uh, receive an email about that build. Hey, the build succeeded, build succeeded, build succeeded. Build failed, build failed, why did it fail? Ah, Nate forgot to add some meta files. Okay, well, which meta files are missing? Okay, well, let's go run over. Hey, Nate, did you get that email? And he's like, yeah, I already committed them, new builds working, next build should, should succeed uh, with those missing files in place. That's awesome. All of a sudden, that whole, like, wait two days until the next time you get around to making a build for that particular platform, find out it doesn't work, track down the person who broke it two days ago, that's now just instantaneous. Much faster, much nicer. <clears throat> and then you can, you know, blame Nate and make him buy you the beers. Sorry, Nate. Um, and then easily share your build. So Nate talked about these features a bunch. Um, <clears throat> sharing with your teammates, with your development team, your collaborators, um, that's super easy right now in Unity Cloud Build. It works. You add them as a collaborator, they have full access to builds. Um, we have the share feature, uh, which is good for sending off one-off builds to testers, uh, clients, potential publishers. You can revoke those links. And we're working on features for sort of that middle tier of like, hey, here's people who we want to get notified for builds, but not give them access to everything else. And uh, those features are forthcoming. So, can you use Unity Cloud Build? The answer is yes, absolutely, so long as you meet our criteria in small print. Um, which are, first off, it's, the beta is an exclusive for Unity Pro customers. Um, our source control we connect to Git, SVN, and Perforce servers. Um, they need to be you know, on the internet, so GitHub, Bitbucket, those common source control hosts we all support, or if you have your own that's internet accessible. Um, and right now we build for iOS, Android, and web player. And it's free, and we're gonna have a free tier ongoing, so please check it out, give us lots of feedback. And we flew through our slides, um, but that means we have more time for questions. So the website is build.cloud.unity3d.com, sign up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we're here all week, we're having another session, a uh, follow-up session on Friday afternoon, we have a booth. It's on that middle tier, not the ground floor, one above that. We have a booth. We'll be hanging out there. Um, if you get stuck, have questions, ideas, uh, come by and see us. But in the meantime, we have questions. I have, have time, time for questions, questions here. here. So, so let's, let's get started. Get started. Yep. yep. So uh, I'm curious, with a larger company that uh, has enough you know, infrastructure, could they possibly publish this internally? You know, we're probably not going to share our personal servers with the internet. <laughs> Great question. So the question was, uh, can a company with lots of infrastructure run the software service internally? Um, no, not at this time, um, but definitely come talk to us. We'd love to hear what, what your needs are, and um, we're, we're gobbling up feedback as fast as we can. So please come let us know. I saw another hand here. Yes? Will it run unit tests? Um, 
yes, I'm, if I don't say this, Danny will come up here and punch me. So uh, yes, we can run unit tests. Um, we don't have a great way to output them though yet, uh, but that, that's on the roadmap. Um, and um, come, come talk to us or talk to Danny in the back and tell him how you want it to work and we'll make it, make it go. Make it yes, we'll make it awesome. Yes. For iOS or Android, especially iOS, um, after it generates a problem, um, do you have like an, uh, a programmatic interface where, say, something could be monitoring the email and you go, oh, there's a new iOS build. Can I dump this onto a, 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 an iOS device automatically? Or does it still have to have a user go, oh, like. So that's a great question. So the question is, is can we automate the installing of a build onto a device yet? Um, no, not yet, yet, that's on the service, but I did find a script that will let you do that to tethered USB devices. And if you come find me, I'll dig that link up for you. Um, it's, that's really cool for automated testing on a device, because you can, you can launch your app with command line, this has nothing to do with my service, by the way. Uh, you can launch an app with command line parameters, which could then run tests for you, and then the device report back home. Um, it looks pretty cool, very that promising. Would, that would fit really well into the whole system. Yes, yeah, absolutely, yes. So besides build CI, what we do on our server is also build load. Uh, our tools like Atlasing, et cetera, and build with Nuki, and we run that on the server as well. Mm -hmm. Is such a thing be possible with Nuki code, or is it just build? So, so the question is, uh, can it do more than just builds? Could it build Atlasing and things like that? Um, the short answer is that um, uh, we run the Unity editor on servers for you. And so um, currently, it's mostly build focused, but we're going to expose more hooks to where you can call specific commands to build asset bundles, build atlases, other things like that that you need the editor to do on an automated basis. Um, similar challenge to the, the unit tests, we need a place to put them. And so we'd love to hear from you where you would want them put and how you would want to be notified about them. Um, but yeah, the, m making the build is the tip of the iceberg. And I mean, it was, it was a hard nut to crack. But once we have Unity running on servers for you, I mean, now we are Unity. We have access to the people making the editor. Um, so we can make it do pretty awesome stuff. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, more hands. hands. Here. Yeah, uh, kind of, uh, what you're doing here sounds really cool. So I don't mean to turn the whole question. No, just tear it down. So it seems like with this, you're putting a lot, we're putting a lot of trust in Unity. Unity has access to our source code. Credentials to our source code repos. You know, how does Unity store credentials and our source code? What happens to our full content on various infrastructure? Even if it's slow, who has access to it? Yep. Sure. Um, so the the short answer, <clears throat> excuse me. So the question was about security um, and Unity having access to source control and source repos. Um, the short answer is that we take security very very seriously. Um, we can talk details if we're under NDA with you. Um, there's not a lot of things that we can say publicly about that. Um, User facing, we, uh, you have an option to cache your library uh, when we make a build for you that will significantly sp speed up build times, uh, but we don't cache other assets than that. And uh, if you come talk to us afterwards, we can see what we can tell you, and if not, direct you to the right people and the security team. But great, great question. Yes, another question. Um, when are you going to have a channel on PC? Um, we're not announcing a launch date for the desktop platforms, um, but a, a big part of joining Unity was the idea that Unity builds for all these different platforms. We should cloud build for all these platforms. Um, so I wouldn't say it's like, you know, in the like maybe never time frame. It's, it's closer than that. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning the Unity way. Yes. That's a great question. So um, for the answer is different for each type of source control. The question was, do we just look at the master branch? So when you configure a project using Git, you tell us which branch to monitor and pull from, and we will build that specific branch. 
if you want to set up an app to build at the same time for three different branches, you can. You just set up three different projects and each one's pointed to a different branch. Um, SVN, slightly different, but not horribly. You tell us which branch slash subdirectory to pull from. Um, Perforce, you tell us which workspace to pull from. Correct. Yeah, that's my understanding. One of the engineers will, yeah, they give me the thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a great idea. We should write that down. <laughs> this is how we work. Uh, yeah, hand here. How do we handle switching versions of Unity? That's a great question. So when you configure a project, uh, we ask you which version of Unity you want to use and which version of Xcode you want to use if you're using Xcode. Um, for Unity, you can select a specific version. We select most of the non-beta builds of Unity at this time. Um, or you can say always use latest. And always use latest will follow the cloud build service as we follow the public releases. And the latest one we support is? 4.5.3. So we build with 4.5.3 right now. Um, each build tells you which version of Unity, Unity we built with. So if we up, up it, you'll see in the next email, email. oh, they, they upgraded. One cool use case that we've run into with some people already as part of the more limited data we've had is when a new version of Unity comes out. Usually it's not work compatible. Occasionally there are little surprise gaps. One nice thing is that there's no work in your side. You, uh, on any computer in your, in your office or studio, you go in and tell the service, hey, I want to see how this behaves with 4.5.3. I either have it configured to build Also tell the rest of the team, don't upgrade yet. <laughs> yeah, artists never like upgrade the day of a milestone and then break. <laughs> never happens. I ne I've never done that. I love artists. They're awesome. All right, we got time for some more questions. Uh, in the back. Yes. How does your build backend uh, scale up to meet demand? How does the build backend scale up to meet demand? Yeah, um, magic scaling pixie fairies. Take care of that for us. <laughs> Um, I don't know how much I can reveal, not under NDA. Um, we're in beta. Scaling is one of the number one things we're going to figure out. Um, and yeah, the more demand we have, you know, the easier it is to get David to write a big check for servers. So that, that's a great question. The question was about uh, what are the build times and how do they compare than desktop? So if you're sitting on your PC making a build for yourself, it's going to be faster than cloud build right now. Um, because you have your source pulled. You probably have your library built for that platform. Um, you don't have to upload it anywhere afterwards. Um, so, but with that in mind, if you consider the time to take to pull your source, make a build, and then upload that source to uh, cloud storage, um, it, it's very fast. And, and we're always finding things to speed it up, like library caching was a huge win, so that if you're building for iOS constantly, you're not recompressing all your textures for iOS, and that was, that was a huge, huge time savings. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah, um, so you say you need a pro license. Does every collaborator need one, or is only one person, one license need to look in? Um, I'm not sure. Come talk to me afterwards. I'll get an answer for you. That's a great question about pro licenses, though. Yes, and right next to you. Yes, so the question is about uptime promises. I don't know that we've made any yet since we're still in beta, um, but if you have concerns about that, come talk to us and we'll, we'll figure that out. And I saw another hand right there, yes? Yeah, what's, what's the price tag once it's out of beta? The price tag once it's out of beta, what should it be? <laughs> come, 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 come talk to us and uh, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, yes? Okay, so the question was, how do you get a build into production? It's going to be different for every platform. Um, for web player right now, what that'll look like is you'll find that version of the build, build number 48, hey, QA, and our playtesters like that one. Let's download that 
uh, binary, you download a Unity 3D file, you can then upload that wherever you want. We're very interested in automating that push to various locations around the world and ecosystem. Uh, so if you have specific places you want to push it, come talk to us. And in the very back, he's been patient. Yes, we'll get the magic scaling fairies on the Unity beta. No, we, we absolutely want to support betas at some point. Um, we're going to have to synchronize with the beta teams and make sure only beta users have the, that access. Uh, but yeah, the goal is that you know every version of Unity ever on every platform ever, um, that'll happen most likely someday. <laughs> yes? Uh, so the question was, could you control which scenes to build? Um, that's not exposed in our interface yet, but that's a really good idea. Um, kind of like a sub build or practice build. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a really good idea. Yes? Uh, is there a way to like schedule builds instead of based on commit or a combination of the two where you could basically do nightly builds if there were commits? Right, so, so the, the question, question was, do we support nightly builds? builds? We don't support scheduled builds yet. It's, it's been discussed a bunch. Um, there is a button that you can click, and you could probably script that. If you come talk to us, we could help you figure out how to put that on a cron or something. Yes, in the back. Um, uh huh. Sure. Um, right now, um, the answer on scripting is come talk to us. Um, the, uh, and I'm not saying that to be flip. Um, we, we want to expose as much power as possible to you. Um, ideally, since we run the editor, we can expose uh, static script calls to you at various stages of the build. Um, that's not published yet, but if you have specific needs, um, let us know and you know, we'll either show you how to do it or we'll put that on the roadmap. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is in beta, and, and your feedback in this conversation really does drive what, what we do next. And I saw, okay, yep. Uh, if you wanted to add support for different source controls, is there a way to like, plug in to do that, or is there something um, Which source control do you use now? Uh, well, right now, Gotcha. Um, that's something I think we have to do on our end. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that has to get scheduled and take a look at. All right, more questions? Yes? Okay, so we will be uh, at our booth. The booth is on the mezzanine, the second floor, right outside the entrance to the keynote area. Um, you can also email us if, if you prefer email. Um, visit the, the beta site. Um, yeah. Or you can come, come visit, visit Austin if you want some barbecue. <laughs> That's always an option. Yes? Is there, is there a way to see uh, what code was used for which build? And or can you label the build? So the question was, can you see, see which, which code, code was used for a build, and can you label builds? Um, in the uh, build history, it, it, uh, it tells you which commit was used for each build. So underneath the timestamp in that second column. Um, and so it, the, there's a changes column, which you can also view, and that'll show you a diff on that commit. Um, but we're working to like tie that in a little bit closer so that if you have a, like a web-based source control, we can link into that directly. Um, you can't yet add your own labels to builds, but that's a very common request and in, in coming soon. So like that one that you know, got through QA, uh, you can label, say, last good, and I think find I, it again. I think this has to be our last question. Oh, it has to be our, all right, last question. Um, not exactly. We, 
You could do that via branches in Git or subdirectories in, uh, in SVN, but I think as we expose more scriptability, you could say, hey, we're gonna swap these two things out for this build, mm -hmm. or use this custom script define on this particular build and not that other one and get a slightly different set of results. Um, all right, hey guys, these were great questions. Thank you very much. I know that uh, we don't have all the answers yet, but we're admittedly in beta, and with your help, we're gonna make this a really awesome service. So thank you very much. Thanks very much.